Hi there, and uh, welcome to ENGL 1010, Writing Essays About Literature. Today, uh, I'm going to be taking you through the course outline, but there's going to be more to it than that. You know, like, make sure you have your course outline sitting in front of you right now, okay? Pause if you have to, and um, make sure you have your course outline in front of you, because you're going to want to be making notes as we go along. This will save an, an, an incredible amount of time later on when it comes to email and stuff like that. What I found, I've already been teaching a couple of courses online. What I found is the, the course itself is a breeze. It's more the administrative stuff that, that takes up so much time. And so I, I'd really appreciate it if you, you, could, you could minimize email, right? Uh, unnecessary email, all right? And so, anyway. So as I said, writing essays about literature, okay? And... Um, on the course outline, I had the day of the week that the course is listed. That's only for due dates, all right? Uh, I'll, be, I'll be updating you. I'll be sending you email. I'll be sending you, you know, a whole lot of stuff. So don't worry. Don't worry too much about that. But that's the, the only reason I have it on there is simply because the, the day corresponds with the due dates, all right? So that's all. Um, the course is online, obviously, because of everything going on. And so, um, yeah, my name is Professor Gilday. And you have my email there if you need to get a hold of me. There is no TA for the course, right? I'm, I'll be dealing with each and every one of you, right? And so um, don't have to worry about that. Now, my office, all right, obviously, <laughs> I don't even know why I have that on the outline because until things change, we I won't be seeing any of you in my office, but I thought I should include it anyway. And so office hours, as you can see, obviously to be announced, right? <laughs> there may not be any, right? So we'll see about that as well. All right. So I'm on the first page of the outline and I'm not going to go through everything with you, but I, I just want to give you a feel for the course. All right. So this lecture will probably be about 45 minutes and that's all we're going to do. That's all we're going to do in the first lecture. And that's all we would do usually in, 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 in an in-class uh, session as well. Right. I basically go through the course outline in the first class and then, you know, we talk a bit about, you know, some people have questions or what have you, but it, it basically I'm going to be setting the foundations today for what we will be doing later on. All right. So if you feel like there's something else that, that, that should be coming, no, not today. That, that this is all we're doing. But but as I said, do not skip this out uh, the, this lecture because there's going to be important stuff I'm going to be talking about, which will save a lot of time later on. So here we go. All right. So because of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, right? The course is online. And uh, so how is this going to work? Well, as you can see right now, it's, it's almost redundant because if you're watching this lecture now, you know how this course is going to work. I'm going to create the, uh, YouTube videos and I'm going to send them to you along with class notes. And then together, right, as you're watching the lecture, you'll have your notes in front of you and you can make notes as well. So it, it, ironically, this should be easier. This course should be easier than actually an in-class session where you would ha have to actually take all the notes yourself. Right. So and that's the way I've set it up. Now, one thing I want to stress before we get into anything else, I have taught many courses at uh, Carleton uh, through what is now known as COOL, right? C -U, uh, I don't even know what they call it anymore, C-U-O-L, uh, but it used to be C-U-T-V. And the one thing I noticed for students who ended up failing was that they, they put off watching the videos, okay, and they thought that they could catch up later on. Try not to do that. And that's going to be true for all of your courses, right? So think about that for a moment. It, it, it will be possible for you not to watch anything until, you know, almost like, like the end of the term. But if you do that, you're going to be overwhelmed. So try and stay up with this course and with your other courses as well. Right? That's very, very important. All right. And so, um, yeah, a couple of other things here. Just uh, I'm just looking at things here. Okay. So the next thing we have to talk about is your readings. Now, you don't have to buy anything for this course. Nothing. Zero. All right. I'm, I'm going to provide everything you need. But the one thing you do have to figure out is something called Aries, because there are going to be four short stories on Aries that I will ask you to download. I will lecture on and you will make notes as we go along. And I'll, I'll speak more about that later on in, in this lecture, okay? I'll probably, I'll, usually what I'll do is I'll probably go about half an hour, then maybe take a tiny break, and then come back and do other things, right? But anyway, here we go. So there's something, um, this, the, all the readings you need will be either on CU Learn, 
or on something called Aries. So when you go into CU Learn, if, if, if this is your first course you've ever taken, the it's, it's a platform. If you go to Carlton's homepage, and there's a, a an icon at the top where it says jump to. Okay, it's on the top right. And if you hit jump to, you'll see one of the, the selections is see you learn. Okay, so hit that button. Then you put in your password, your username and all of that. And when you do, you'll see all the courses that you're taking. And so you simply hit our course. When you hit our course, you'll see almost immediately, you'll see that I've got some files for you. Not too many because, as I said, I'll be sending you so much stuff anyway that, that I won't have anywhere near as many files as I usually would. All right. But there'll still be a couple that you, you might find of interest. But then if you go over to the right, OK, and you scroll down, you'll see view course in Aries. Aries simply means automatic or automated reserves. So if you hit that button, all the reserves that I put on for you will all be there. So what you'll find is there'll be four short stories, but there'll also be some 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 literature that deals with not necessarily. <laughs> there'll be other essays, okay, that will accompany the short stories. Don't worry about those for now. I'll get to those. Okay, when we get to around lecture three, I'll start talking about some secondary sources. Well, the secondary sources that I'll, I'll be discussing, okay, will be the ones you can find at Aries. Okay, there'll also be one other that will be on See You Learn, okay, but we won't worry about that now. That's going to be much later on in the course. All right, I'm just thinking down the road. So, so don't worry about that. But if you go to Aries, all your readings, everything you will need for this course will be there. Literally everything. You. All, even the secondary material, as I said, I provided for you. I'm going to be referring to it. All right. So just be aware of that. Okay. And, and that's really all I need to worry about for that, I think. So don't buy anything. Don't buy anything for this course. All right. I'll provide you with everything. Okay. Sorry about the glare on my glasses. I don't know. It's driving me nuts. It probably is for you as well. Anyway. All right. So as I said, it's going to be a bit informal today. Just an introduction. Um, it's going to be an intensive writing course focusing on the formulation and construction of a literary essay, right? Obviously at the university level. And that's another thing, okay? Um, th th this is going to be very different from high school, very different, all right? And so um, note that this is not an ESL course. For some reason, there's, there was a mix-up in the past. Uh, I'll expect that you all have English proficiency as we begin, right? And then we'll just go from there, okay? So there we go. So, specific course focus. Okay, so I'm on page two now. Make, make some notes. For the purposes of this section, okay, there are many sections of this course. For the purposes of this section, we're going to deal with short stories only. I find that there's no point in asking you to read novels can, when we can do the same thing with a short story. Poetry, on the other hand, is very difficult to document and figure out, you know, how to write an essay and all that. Very difficult. So we will not be doing that. Okay, so make a note of that. If you were hoping to do poetry, I would suggest find another section. Okay, that's not what we're doing in, in this section. All right, so we're going to stick with short stories. Okay, and uh, as I said, there'll be four and uh, you'll be asked to read them. And then, as I said, I'll lecture on them. I'll, I'm going to give you like hundreds of different ideas when it comes to how to actually create an essay. I'll give you lots of insights, lots of ways to, re to, to read a short story. There's no one way to read a short story, right? Uh, we, we will each bring different things to the short story as we move along. And that, I think that's very important, all right? Um, uh, <sighs> I could go into a whole story about my, my background and all that. I don't know if I should, but um, anyway, uh, I come from the working class, which means I, I see things differently than a lot of people who maybe come from affluent backgrounds. I'm sure some of you are the same way, right? So when I read a story, certain things will pop out to me. Certain things will, will register with me, resonate, right? Whereas when someone else reads a short story, other things will, or, or any story in particular, other things will resonate. And so... Don't worry about being right about, you know, whatever topic you choose later on. No, it'll be more about creating an argument and working it through. That's really important. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I, I did that at the beginning, right? Because that's more or less where I come from on all, all of this stuff, right? I'm not going to tell you this is what the story means. I'm going to give you 
different interpretations, right, of how you can actually crack the code of an argument. So that's what we're going to be doing. So if you take a look here, all right, and I don't know if I need to, to read all of these little bullet points to you, but, you know, we're going to, I'll show you how to create a thesis, how to create an argument. Um, I'll show you how to, how, how to document, right? Uh, and I'll show you some literary skills along the way, right? Irony and things like that. We'll talk we'll, we'll, just in general about that. I'm not, I won't be too hung up on stuff like that, right? Because as I said, it's going to be more about the argument itself, right? Actually, I could tell you a little joke right now about irony. The only the only problem is I don't know if, if, if any of you are old enough to get it. But if you remember the Alanis Morissette uh, song, right? Isn't it ironic, right? Rain on your wedding day. If you go back and take a look, uh, take a look at the lyrics to that entire song, nothing in that song is ironic. Nothing. Zero. There is nothing ironic in that song at all. Rain on your wedding day is unfortunate. It's not ironic. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I don't know why I brought that up, but, but I enjoy doing stuff like that. If, if we were in the classroom together, we could have fun with stuff like that. All right. Anyway, now you'll also be introduced to secondary research, but that's going to be done in a very different way than normal. Normally, there would be a librarian who would come into the classroom and give a virtual tour, right? Literally on, on, on a screen, you know, they, the librarian would just simply take you through all the, all, all the things that you can find in the library. Well, we obviously won't be able to do that. But what I have done is I've asked the librarian to create a file and it'll be a generic file. Ironically, oh, ironically, it won't be a file about literature. It'll be just a, a generic file to show you how to access the library, how to how to access all, all the all the different uh, methods, all, all the different uh, tools that we have in the library for, for you to use, use for your research. Right. So what I'm what I'm hoping to do is to show you in the first year that that will enable you then to use that file for all of your courses. Now, the file itself, as I said, will not be geared towards literature. There's a reason for that. And we'll, 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 you'll see why, okay, in, in, when I get to, I think it's on lecture five or six, okay, I'm going to go through the, the lectures with you in a moment, right, but as I said, so, so don't get confused, don't, don't panic if you, if you think, well, why isn't this talking about literature in, in the library file? You'll see why, you'll see why, okay, trust me, I'm a doctor, I'm joking, anyway, now, see you learn. Uh, I know that for some of your other courses, the, almost the entire course is being run through CU Learn. I'm not going to be doing that. Okay. Instead, what I'm going to do is I will post some files, not all, as I said, um, but I think it's important. I'm, and, and I'm definitely not going to post grades, not on CU Learn. Why? Because when I uh, when, when I mark a a an essay, it can take me up to a half an hour. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. It can take me up to a half an hour to, to mark an essay. So I don't want you to all of a sudden just go to see you learn, see what your grade is without even looking at all the comments that I've given you, right? So instead, I think it's important, especially for a writing course, that you look at the feedback I'm giving you and then implement it on the next assignment. And that'll, and, and that'll be very important for the very first assignment, uh, the earliest assignment that you have, which will be an outline. We'll talk about more about that today, maybe, but down the road. OK, and it won't be anything like you've seen in high school. All right. So and, and again, <laughs> I'm sorry to harp on this. Please don't email me saying, but in high school, we were told, all right, that we're not in Kansas anymore. I wonder if anyone can get that joke anyway. All right. Send me an email if you know what that referred to there. We're not in Kansas anymore. Okay, you all probably knew that for, as a child. Okay, so I'm joking. Don't send me an email now that I think about it. Okay, it's the Wizard of Oz. Anyway, all right. So, um, and so as I said, um, there's a few things at the bottom of page two, and again, because we're doing this online, I don't know if we have to worry too much about that. But make sure you always keep copies of everything. When I send stuff back to you, hang on to it. OK, just because let's just say something goes missing down the road, like I could easily misplace something. It's these are crazy times, right? I'm dealing like let me just stop for a moment. If we were in class right now, uh, I, I could deal with every all of your questions within 20 minutes. Right. You know what I mean? Like at the end of a, of a lecture, we could talk, whatever. But because everything is being done online, it, things are nuts. 
Uh, and so I'm finding that it's the administrative side of the, the courses. I'm doing many, right? Uh, so it's the administrative side that is taking up most of the time. It's not the actual course itself. So be careful when it comes to right, hanging on to assignments just in case something happens. You never know. You never know. All right. So and then, yeah, as I said, um, do that. Just who knows? Maybe, maybe like I've got another room, okay, behind this one that has papers like you wouldn't believe, okay, piled up like you wouldn't believe. So maybe I put one in the wrong file or the wrong folder, or whatever. It, so anyway, just hang on to everything. Essays must be submitted on the assigned due date to be considered on time. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Well, okay. A couple of things about your essay assignments, and please make a note of this now. This is something else I've noticed that students, for some reason, they keep emailing me, and it's like, I already went through that. Ah! So make a note of this right now, okay? We're going to do two things right now. Your assignments must always, always, okay, be submitted as a word attachment, okay? Don't ask me why. <laughs> That's what I'm expecting. So don't send assignments, you know, as a PDF or through Google Docs or see you learn, right? No, don't do that. Instead, everything is going to be a word attachment, everything. That way I can manipulate stuff. I'm familiar with like, like with the way in which I go about grading and all of that and, and putting comments on. So make sure it, word attachment for everything, everything, right? Now, this is the only thing that I think might confuse some of you. Late papers. Because of the, the way everything has gone online, some of you are going to become overwhelmed. You are. And as I said, because you can put off watching the lectures, right? Not just mine, but others, right? So I'm giving you the opportunity right now to hand in your paper late if you need to. So let me be clear on that. Don't, again, I want to try and minimize email, all right? You have an automatic extension on both of your papers, okay? So take a look, page three. As I said, make sure you've got your notes in front of you because I don't want to have to explain this through email. If any paper is late, it will only be accepted the following week, right? So the following class and will receive no comments. So that's kind of your penalty. If you don't get the paper in on time, I simply will give it a grade, but I won't put any comments on it. Now, so that's an agreement between you and myself. So don't, if I send back a grade, don't then email me saying, well, how come I got that grade? Can you please explain? Well, no, the agreement was <laughs> that you wouldn't get any comments. Okay, all right. Now, on the other hand, there will be no grade penalty. So again, let me be very clear. You'll get no comments, but you will get the exact same grade you would have anyway if you had handed it in on time. And you can do that for both papers, okay? However, you may not do that for your outlines or your quizzes. They have to be done on, on the day, okay, the due, the due date. Why? because that way I have time to give you feedback before you're ready to do the next assignment. So are we clear on that? You have an extension for the paper, that's fine, but I will. But but you need to hand in the outline or submit electronically, the outline and the quiz or whatever. And again, I'll be updating you on stuff like that, all right? But but so, so that's the only thing that I think, that's why I have it bolded, right? So again, and don't email me, please don't email me saying, do we really have an extension? Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> Sorry, I've done this so many times, right? Those are, the, those are the kind of email I get, all right? Yeah, really? Did you really mean that? Yes, I meant it. Okay, anyway. And then, and then obviously, if uh, something comes up health-wise or what have you, you know, these things happen, then that you should email me about just to let me know, yes, I'll need a bit of extra time, but you should have a, a, a medical certificate or something like that that accompanies your request. Okay? All right. Now, getting into a bit of the nuts and bolts of the course, uh, you'll have a couple of grammar quizzes throughout the term. Don't worry. 
like I'll cover everything. Like it, as a matter of fact, the very next lecture I'm doing will be the basis of the first grammar quiz. Okay, lecture two. And so it'll be on stuff like commas and possessive cases and things like that. But again, it'll be a refresher course. So don't panic. Don't panic, right? I'll, I'll take you through it. Matter of fact, I, th I, I think I'll explain things a lot clearer than what you were probably given in high school because I won't, I won't do it technically, right? I'll, instead, I'll show you how stuff works. How does grammar work? Why does it work? Like, like oh, I, I could give you a thousand examples right now, but, but in lecture two, you'll see what I mean. So as I said, uh, you'll be given two quizzes and the quizzes will be simply 10 sentences and you'll correct them, right? So in other words, they might have mistakes in them. They may not, they may not, but there'll be instructions at the top. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I take you through that. I'll send an email, I, I'll mention it in the lecture, all right? So there'll be two quizzes and they'll each be worth 2.5% of your overall grade. So not a lot, right? 5% in total, okay? So not a big deal. Um, and then, uh, but you will not be able to make up the quizzes, okay? simply because I'll be providing answers eventually, right? And so once I provide the answers, well, then I'm, I, I, don't, I don't see why I should be able to then allow you to write the, the quiz, right? Okay, so and th those are the little things, by the way, that, are, that you have to think about on an online course, right? Like in person, let's just say you weren't there for a couple of weeks, well, then I could allow you to just write it immediately because, well, you haven't been here, so you don't know the answers. So anyway, I'm... I don't even know what word I was going to use there. But anyway, okay, I'm off on a tangent. All right. Okay, so now we get to the obvious, the objectives of the course. I'm going to teach you how to write a university level paper uh, in relation to literature. How do we put a literature paper together? That's what I'm going to do. And we've got 13 weeks to figure that out. A lot of time. But what you're going to see is the first four lectures, okay, they're going to be top heavy. What I mean by that is, by the time you you hand in your first paper, you will have been shown more or less everything you need for a literature paper, okay, or for a paper on literature, okay? And then after that, we will fine-tune things. We will hope to get you to the next level if you, if, you know, if you're not there already. And so lecture three, for instance, is going to be very long. As a matter of fact, I'm probably going to split it up into two components. So top heavy to begin with, watch the lecture, watch the first four weeks of the lectures very, very carefully. Things will get a lot smoother and easier after that, because usually in class, there would be a lot of one on one dialogue. OK, during the lecture, like there, like in the second half, we would sometimes we wouldn't even have a lecture. We would just kind of talk about the assignments and all that. Well, we won't be able to do that, obviously, for this, right? Uh, so, as I said, make sure that you keep up with the first four lectures, okay, the first four weeks, because there's going to be a lot of information, okay, four or five anyway. And then after that, things will slow down. You'll see. And so, um, by the end of the course, as I said, I, I, I hope to have shown you how to look at literature from a critical perspective and how to document, you know, like argument, thesis, all that kind of stuff, okay? And as I said, we've got lots of time, lots of time, okay? So, you know, let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. All right, methodology. Well, okay, the lectures obviously will be based on, okay, subjects including literature. You'll you'll have some stories that you should read before a, le a lecture. And again, that's all in the course outline. And then I'll show you some writing methods. How do we go about this? And some grammar skills, as I said, which we'll get into in the very next lecture, all right? And then, uh, the methodology, okay, uh, I'm being redundant now. So I will send you lectures and uh, I will send you notes. Not always, okay, but, but for the most part, for the most part, I will send you notes and then uh, you will simply follow along. So as I said, in terms of taking notes, it's gonna be very easy, very easy. Now on the subject of documentation and research, there's only one thing I really need to talk about right now. That is MLA, so that stands for Modern Language Association. Okay, so write it down if you're not familiar with those terms. Modern Language Association, that is mandatory. That is the only style I will accept. So, because that's the style in essay writing for literature. So, if you are used to having title pages, okay, well, you shouldn't have that for this course. Title pages 
are included in what we call APA style, American Psychological Association. That is not acceptable for this class. On CU Learn, I will provide a sample page of what, it, what a first page in MLA looks like. It'll be generic. Uh, the material isn't even about literature, all right? I just, I stole it from a website. I'm going to tell you about the website in just a second. Um, and so make sure you follow that material, okay? That were, I should say that, that method. So no title page. It's, it's the style where you start on the left-hand side top with your information, my name, right? All of that kind of stuff, right? And then you have your title and then you get right into the paper. And so if you have any questions on documentation, I'm gonna take you through documentation, the basics. I'll, I'll, we'll do the basics, all right? It's a first year course. I'm not expecting you to do too much. So we'll, we'll do the basics. But if you ever have sophisticated questions for this course or other courses, I'm sure other professors are gonna mention this as well. Um, you can type in OWL, who, who, right? OWL <laughs> at Purdue, okay? Or OWL Purdue. Okay, so there we are at the bottom of the page now. Purdue is a university in uh, Indiana. And it's, that, that website is considered to be probably the best in the world when it comes to any sort of documentation, MLA, APA, Chicago, what have you, all right? But remember, for this course, MLA only, all right? Okay, but again, don't email me, you know, you know tonight saying, I don't understand what I'm, I'm gonna, I'll show you, don't worry, okay? Everything that I mentioned here, I'm going to show you, all right? So don't panic, all right? Although I know it, 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 this might be the first university courses you, you've ever taken, so so things can be a bit daunting, right? So, but don't worry, I'll, I'll get you through it. Okay, I'll get you through it. All right. So, so the grading system is the next thing on the list. All right. I'm just throwing the sheets aside here. That's pretty straightforward. Quiz we already talked about, right? Then you'll have your first outline. I'm very strong on outlines. If you can figure out how to create a really good outline, okay, which again, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you in detail. All right. If you can figure out how to do a really good e uh, uh, outline, you'd be amazed how easy the paper writes itself. I know that sounds silly, but it's true. The, again, I've been doing this for over 30 years. Okay. It is true. If you have a great outline, if everything falls into place, then the essay becomes easy. But if, let me give you an example. When I was in high school, right, this is the way I would write an essay. I'd create an introduction before I did anything else, and then I would write the paper. That is the worst, worst way to write a paper. Your introduction should be almost the last thing you create. Okay, I'm just giving you an idea of where we're going with this course. If you create your introduction too early, then you're going to, all you're doing is creating headaches for yourself because now you feel the need to force stuff into the introduction. It should work the other way around. That's exactly the way I'm going to teach you. All right, we're, we're going to do other things first, which will then set up the formation of the introduction. You'll see. Okay, so stick with me. Your writing is going to improve if you just follow me. All right, as I said, I've been doing this for a long time. All right. Okay, so your outline. First thing, we're going to concentrate on that, all right? We're going to make sure that you're out. As a matter of fact, I, I will probably put more comments on your first outline than I will on your first paper. And I'm not joking. The first outline I will spend a lot of time on, all right? Because I want to make sure you understand what we're doing. So that will be your first assignment. Then you'll have a short paper, only three pages, three to four, okay? Length, I... It, length is irrelevant when it comes to this course. What is more important is understanding how to put it all together. All right, and, and that's, I, I, I mean that, okay, sincerely. Okay, so don't send seven, eight page papers. The minute you do that, I know you're not following what we've been doing, okay? And then we'll have another outline, and then finally a final paper. And the final paper will be a bit, a bit longer, only because now you've incorporated probably more ideas and right, uh, you've learned the mechanics. And that'll be at the very end of the course, right? So, and that will total 100%. And notice the grading. The grading is, 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 you know, smaller at the beginning, right? Each percentage is smaller at the beginning. And then we build as we go along. So that by the time you get to the end, right? You, you, you can actually pull your grade up because of the percentage weightage, right? And that's, that's why I've done it that way. All right, and that only makes sense, right? So if you just take a look there, 55% of your final grade will come near the end of the course. 
Right? Actually, 60% when you include, okay, sorry, 57.2% when you include the quiz as well. All right. What I'm saying though is even if you start slowly, don't worry, don't panic because there's lots of time and, and, and points that you can make up along the way. And that, so as I say, and so keep in mind, writing is a process and I understand that. And so let's just say by the end of the course, you end up with 78. Okay. But you started only, you know, 72, whatever. I'll give you the A minus. Okay. Understood. Understood. So this is, this is so important. Do not be emailing me about your grades. Okay. Again, I've done this so long. I, I know what an A, B, C, or D is. Instead, right, let's think about progression, building. And so I'll say it again. If you, you get a 78, okay, or 78.5, right? Maybe you should say 78.5. I'll give you the A minus. Okay. If you started lower and worked your way up to that. Okay. So that, and so that's how the grading will work. All right. And we'll talk more about grading at the very end of the outline. Now, the, the next point that, that we, I don't even know if I want to talk about this. Academic dishonesty takes up basically the, the rest of page four. I want to be careful about how I, I word this. One or two of you may plagiarize. Okay. But you may not even know that you plagiarized. We'll take care of stuff like that. But at least be aware of what plagiarism is and don't email me once again talking about paraphrasing. There is no need whatsoever to paraphrase when it comes to an English paper, okay? When it comes to a literary paper, none, zero. There will be no paraphrasing on this course, zero. I know in sociology, in psychology, case studies, yes, you obviously need to paraphrase. Not for literature, never, ever, ever, especially, okay, when it comes to a first, first year paper. Shall I say that again? <laughs> okay, no paraphrasing, all right? And as we move through the course and I show you how to quote and everything else, you'll see what I mean, okay? So, so I'm not saying no paraphrasing for your other courses. I'm simply saying for this course, no paraphrasing. All right, understood? Good, all right. You with your hand up, put it down. All right. No questions. I'm joking. All right. And so if you go then to page five, and I think I might, I might take a little break. We're a half hour in. Um, yeah, I might take a little break just for a second uh, after the, 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 this next thing I'm about to do. So you see all the bullet points there you've been given. That, that's plagiarism, you know, and, but you guys know that, right? Using uh, an author's words or ideas without proper reference. Um, but again, in English, it, it doesn't really apply. Well, I mean, okay, I shouldn't say that. It can apply, but it shouldn't for this course. And then, um, yeah, uh, cutting and pasting from the internet and all that. We'll, we'll talk about that down the road, all right? Uh, although, <laughs> if you do cut and paste from the internet, at least, like, like, don't insult my intelligence, at least then change the font to match the rest of the paper. <laughs> That's one thing I've noticed quite a bit. When, when students cut and paste, it's like, oh my God, this is so obvious that you did that, right? So, so as I said, if you're gonna cheat, at least do it properly. <laughs> I'm kidding, but you know what I mean, right? Anyway, all right. Uh, and, so, and so, yeah, um, I'll do one more thing and then I'm just gonna take a quick break, all right? So, internet sources. Okay, when it comes to things like Wikipedia, all right, Google, whatever, Google Docs, they're not bad places to start because you might read, you know, certain entries and see certain names pop up. Okay, so let me say that again. Wikipedia is not a bad place to start, but it is the worst place to end. The founder of Wikipedia, I have the file if you want me to send it to you. The founder of Wikipedia actually wrote an essay, okay, pleading with university students not to use his website, okay, not to use his website for, for academic papers, okay. Wikipedia is, is, is a great site, obviously. We all know that, right? I'm not, I'm not a snob when it comes to that. Great site for finding, you know, like trivia information, trivial information, or, you know, quote unquote factual. <laughs> okay. But but when it comes to academic papers, no. You do not want to be using sources like that. Why? 
for a variety of reasons that I'll get into later on. Okay, So instead, we'll want to use the library database. And that only makes sense if you think about it, right? Like you're you're learn in this course you're learning how to write an academic paper, okay, on literature. So watch out, okay? Do not do not cite from Wikipedia or whatever, right? By the time of your final essay submission, right? You, you you'll understand all this stuff, right? So and as I said, we'll get into all that. And so. I think what I'll do now, I'm just going to take a quick break, right? I just want to check my notes. As a matter of fact, we're not going to be too much more. We're probably only going to go about 45 minutes today. So let me just take a, a, a quick pause here, and then I'll, I'll be right back, okay? Thanks. All right, so we're back. And um, there's a few things on, on page five that I guess I need to explain, but they may not even apply. Notice the way I've got... The, uh, the bold at the half, uh, halfway down the page. So there are a lot of support systems on campus, obviously, okay? But will you be accessing these things? We don't know. We don't know what'll be open, what'll be closed. And so these are the kind of, you'll get updates from the university, okay? Um, under non-pandemic circumstances, you'd be allowed to use the writing center, what have you. And so just in case, just in case things change, then I've given you all the information for things like that, right? Requests for academic accommodation, right? All those kinds of things, pregnancy, etc., religious obligation. But you see, because of the way we're doing this course, religious obligation, for instance, won't really apply. In other words, I won't be asking you to do anything on a, on a given day. So, so, so that's what I mean by things you know, they're just a bit different. They're fluid. Things are changing, right? So who knows? I may be even giving you an update later on, right, about maybe office hours or whatever. But for now, obviously, there are none, okay? All right. And so, and that applies really for everything on page six, all right? So as I said, there's no point in going through all that, but you should make a note of page six in case there is anything, because let me, let me be clear. Even though the actual offices of, say, the Paul Menton Center, okay, the like actual in person will be closed, you can still call them. There will be people at the other end, all right. And so it's it's not like it's not like the even though the the buildings have shut down in a sense, the people haven't. They're they they are still working, okay, but they're working from home, obviously. So those 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 accommodations still apply, still apply. Except you might have to phone, okay, to, 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 you know, make an appointment. Sorry, not make an appointment, but, but to deal with the situation. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. But there's all the, I think, all the information you need on page six, all right? So, and it, it's important that you are aware of these things, right? Because as I said, there are many, many different programs available through the university, which many students don't even realize, all right? Okay, let's get into the actual course itself. And again, Okay, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna do everything, but I do wanna explain just a couple of things which may be confusing. So I've given you the lectures. So take a look, class one, right? So obviously today is an introduction into the course outline, okay? I explained Aries, right? And so, and play around with it. Go to, remember, go back to uh, See You Learn, okay? When you go into See You Learn, remember, there'll be some files there for you. But then at the right hand side, scroll down. I think now you can actually see it. You don't have to scroll anymore. It used to be on the left, but now it's on the right. And you just hit view course in Aries. There'll be stuff there for you, right? You'll see. And, and with the stuff in Aries, you can view it, or you can download it, right? Print it. And I would strongly recommend that for the essays, sorry, for the short stories themselves, download, print, have them in front of you when I do the lecture. That way you'll be able to highlight. So there's the first thing I want to talk about when it comes to our week by week. I will not send you my notes on the short stories themselves. My notes are very cryptic. I have keywords that I work off of, right? Then I have ideas that I explore. And so my notes wouldn't make any sense anyway. But that is the one thing that you will be asked to do. You will have to actually take notes, okay? Just like in high school, you'll be taking notes as I go through the stories. Now, I'll be telling you, though, I'll be telling you, look, watch, page three. Notice on page three at the top, see there where it says whatever, right? Highlight that. Make a note of that, right? That's the way we'll go about it. 
And so, and I think we'll be doing that in week three. Yeah, week three. And so, um, yeah, I'm just trying to get my thoughts together here. Yeah, so next week we'll be doing some grammar. And again, don't skip these things, all right? I'm going to be showing you stuff. There's in, 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 in university courses, okay, sorry, first year university students, there's about 10 things, okay, common mistakes that, that most students make. I'm simply going to show you those things and say, watch out for this, all right? And again, I, I maybe I didn't mention this already, I was not a strong writer in, in, in high school, okay? I had to figure all this stuff out. And so by following what I'm doing, I guarantee, okay, your writing will improve if you follow what I'm doing. All right, and put it into practice. All right, that's another thing. I'll be talking about that in, in, in the next lecture. All right, and so as I said, week two we'll be just doing you know commas, possessive cases, the, like the basics. The basics. We'll get more sophisticated later on. Right, but for now that's what we'll be doing. Then in the third lecture, and that's going to be probably the third lecture will probably be the longest lecture. It's going to be. I'll probably send it out as kind of three A, three B, and the reason why I'm going to do that. 3A will be an introduction to literary analysis. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you things that you you may think you don't need because you know in high school you learned all that. Mm -mm, no, it's very different, very different when it comes to university. All right. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna say anything about that right now. Just trust me. You do not want to skip that lecture because in that lecture, make a note right now. You should be putting a star beside an introduction to literary analysis because that's where I really get into. How, how do we actually analyze an essay at the university level? Okay, it, it's it's not a retelling of the plot. It's not your opinion, like your the way you felt about the story. No, 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 no. It's very different. Okay, and so again, I don't want to give away too much just yet, but don't skip that lecture. All right, <laughs> skip. You know what I mean. Then in the same. Uh, set of, of notes that I send out to you, I'll be also talking about, uh, or I should say, I'll be sending you the lecture that I do on the first short story, Paul's Case. It is a perfect story to start when it comes to writing essays. If you've read it before, I have a funny feeling you know what I mean. If you haven't, don't worry, I'll take, I'll take you through it, all right? But notice what I have written there in the outline. What's the problem? This is the first question we always want to ask ourselves after we've read a story. What's the problem? What, what's going on there? And when we get then into week four, you'll see exactly what I mean by that. Although I'll mention it in week three as well. But when we get to week four, we'll start talking about outlines. How do we problematize a text? All right. A text meaning it could be the novel, could be a short story, could be poem. How do we problematize it? What is the problem that we have to solve? So when I show you how to do an outline, okay, we're going to start with the problem, why the problem persists, and then does the problem get resolved? Okay, why does the problem get resolved or not? That's the structure of every essay, okay, at least every good literary essay. What's the problem? Why does the problem persist? Why does the problem get resolved or not? That's it. That's it. Sounds easy. It's not, right? So as I said, I'll take you through all that as well. So that'll be your first reading. Do me a favor, okay? Always take the readings from CU Learn, okay? From Aries, I should say, because in Aries, I've given you the information you need with page numbers and all of that, so that you can actually quote and document. So, so even though you can find the stories online, please take them from Aries, right? Simply so that everything matches up, okay? Right? Okay. Um, and so, and then in week four, we'll do, and week four, by the way, might be the shortest lecture of, of, of the term. Actually, no, that's not true. But anyway, uh, so week four, we'll do the yellow wallpaper. So you have your choice for the first paper. You can do it on Paul's case, or you can do it on the yellow wallpaper. All right. Up to you. Totally up to you. If you, if you're interested in feminism, you may want to do the yellow wallpaper, right? And that's why I added that one. Okay. And then, as I said, we'll also do some organization structure, things like that. And then you'll have your first quiz, which I'll send out to you, right? Right there it says, okay, uh, sent out at, through email, all right? And so, and again, I'll, I'll give you reminders as we go along. Then, sorry, the fifth lecture may be the shortest, simply because normally uh, you would have a library tour, 
the librarian, okay, might would come in. I, I said that earlier already, right? But so I'm repeating myself. But so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'll send you a file, and the file will take you through the library tour. And so th that lecture might only be about 45 minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it'll be much longer. And so then you've got your due dates as well there for your first outline and all of that. And more or less, that, that, that's almost like the first half of the course, because in the next lecture, I'm more or less getting you ready. OK, we'll talk about definitions, comma splices, and then your works cited. If you don't know what a works cited is, don't worry. Don't worry. It's, it's very similar to what you would have called a bibliography in high school, right? Except in MLA, we call it a works cited. And again, I'll take you through it. Don't worry. As a matter of fact, there'll be a file on so you Learn and a file that I will send. All right, it'll be the same file, but what I mean is don't worry, you'll have everything you need. So, and then that's almost the first half of the course right there, all right? Then week seven or lecture seven, I'll be doing another reading. A great story for essays, by the way, the handsomest drowned man in the world. And many of you will choose to write on that one. And again, I'm going to give you lots of stuff. Like I'll, I'll, I'll have templates for you in that. I'll send you the templates for that lecture and all of that. And then we'll have the fall break. And what is nice about the fall break is that you'll be handing in your paper, the first paper, just before the fall break. That'll give me enough time to mark them. Remember, I'm doing other courses, right? So that'll give me enough time to mark them, scan them, get them back to you. And then we can always discuss through email if you have questions. So that, that'll work perfectly, the way that the, everything falls into place, okay? And then week eight, another lecture on a different story, right? Some of you may want to do The Rocking Horse Winner. You may have read it in high school, right, D.H. Lawrence. Uh, so don't get confused there where it says essays returned and discussed or whatever, right? I'll get them back to you as I, as, as I can, all right? Easiest way to say it. And then we'll end off doing some grammar, but now we'll get a bit more sophisticated with grammar, style, okay? I'm, I'm going off the, the outline now. So we'll end off doing style, grammar. We'll get more sophisticated because, of course, now you have a paper due again, a second paper, worth more. So I just want to make sure we get you, know, we get you ready for that. Okay, so I, I think that makes sense, right? We, we do a lot to begin with. And then we build, then we fine tune, and then we have our final paper. There'll also be a second grammar quiz, right? But again, that's way down the road, way down the road, okay? So remember, everything will be handed in as a word attachment, all right? Technically, right, um, actually, no, that, that, that should be good enough, all right? So you've got all your due dates there, everything you need, right? And, but again, as I said, this is way down the road. So you'll, you'll be hearing from me, obviously, through email other than just the lectures I send out. Now, on the subject of essays, may, please read the information that I have there, all right? The information, all this information is crucial to creating a good paper. All the information I have there will surface in the lectures, but take a moment to read all, all the things that I've, I've noted there just to give you an idea of what I'm looking for, all right? Don't retell the plot. Don't quote at length. You know how you sometimes have block quotes? There is no need for, for that in a first year paper in English. No need whatsoever. Get familiar with all of the things that I'm doing here, okay? that, I'm, that I'm stating here. Because if you don't, that's where you lose marks. I'm, I'm giving you the obvious. I'm saying, okay, watch out for these things. Do not do these things, all right? And so I've also included in the outline and this is at the bottom of page eight now. I've included in the outline um, some some essay topics, but but trust me, they are not very good. What you want to do, you want to you want to create your own topics. All right, okay. Sorry, when I said bottom of page eight, I simply mean I'm, I'm referring to the topics that are later on in the course outline. They're at the bottom of page nine. Create your own topics. You'll see what I mean when I start doing the lectures. I'll start to give you ideas, insights, and you'll think, oh, okay, that sounds interesting. Whereas if you take a look at the, the topics that I have, they're very general, very general. 
So again, it's almost like my topics are almost like Wikipedia. Not a bad place to start, <laughs> but <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway. All right. Uh, page nine. Yeah, we're almost done. We're almost done for the day. Page nine, essays in general, minimum requirements for all MLA essays. Do I need to read that out? I'm telling you right now, if you send me an essay on time that has a title page, I'll put a grade on it and send it right back to you. MLA papers do not have title pages. Your paper should be Times New Roman 12, from the beginning of the essay to the end of the work cited. There's no bolding. Okay, You'll lose marks. You will lose marks if your paper is an A paper, but you've got bolding and big font. I'm not going to give you the A. Follow the instructions. They're very, very clear and very straightforward. Okay, so there you have the minimum requirements for all MLA uh, uh, essays, right? One inch margins. And then obviously you've got all the information, right? Top left corner, right? Your name, student number, professor's name, all of that. Okay. And we'll talk about titles. We'll get into that as well. The, the importance of a really good title when it comes to any type of essay. So we'll get to that. And then notice bold times New Roman 12. Make a note of it right now. I'm sure most of your computers are already set to that anyway, but make a note of that, all right? I'm getting old. Don't give me tiny font that I can't read. <laughs> I'm kidding, but anyway. Actually, I'm not. I, I could use some new glasses. I gotta make an appointment. Anyway, okay. And so I think the essay topics, I've covered that, right? Yeah. We're almost done. One last thing. I'm going to take five minutes now. When you were in high school, okay, maybe just last year, maybe 10, 15 years ago, what I found was if your English teacher liked you and if you were creative, then you did very well. Okay. Some of you are smiling right now because you know exactly what I mean. I could tell you stories, but I won't. When it comes to university, this is, this is one of the benefits of doing an online course. I'm not going to meet you guys. So, in a sense, there will be no favorites or anything like that. If you write an A paper, you're going to get an A. If you write a B paper, you're going to get a B, C, D, F, etc. Well, I guess you can't go etc. after F, can you? So, what is an A paper? What is a B? Okay, it's all right there for you. I have made what, what I think we can agree upon is a kind of a contract. An A paper, obviously, is something that stands out. It is flawless in terms of grammar, argument, logic, etc. A B paper, okay, it, it's pretty darn close to that, except, you know, there, there are problems with some of those, those variations. A C paper for an English paper is really easy. More or less, you retell the plot, and you might have a couple of quotes, right? Uh, but there's really no argument per se. And then a D paper, you didn't put any time into it whatsoever. There's probably no quotes, no work cited. And a D paper usually is bordering on an F. I think that's pretty clear, isn't it? Right? So, in other words, an A paper, boom, clear, focused, argument, logic, okay, grammar, everything, argument, like everything. B paper, uh, it's, it's kind of it, all those elements are kind of there, but there are problems with it. C paper, now there's, there's nothing really of that going on. Instead, you really just have, you know, a retelling of the plot and some observations maybe, you know, out of the blue, but there's no real argument. And then a deep, and we don't even need to go there, right? And a, right? You follow what I mean? And so that's basically an introduction to the course, right? So as I said, some lectures will probably go an hour. Some may only go 40 minutes. It'll, it'll, it'll depend because, as I said, especially with the library tour, right? But be ready, be ready to at least spend, you know, two hours, two hours usually. Okay. Well, when I say two hours, sorry, if, if there's a, a, a reading that is included, then you, you, might, you might be spending a bit more time with the lectures. Okay, sorry. Let me just clarify. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm almost done for the day. All right. Don't fall behind. That's really the, the point I was trying to make. Don't fall behind when it comes to watching your lectures, all right? As I said, I, I, I taught on CUTV, okay, cool, whatever, 
for many, many years. And that, like I said, that was the one thing I noticed with students. They just found, at the end, they found it overwhelming. So think about it. You've got my course, okay? The one we're doing right now. But then you have other courses. Make yourself a, a schedule. Seriously, I'm being serious about this, okay? Time management is crucial at university. It, it, it's one of the, the major reasons why students fail is time management. Make a schedule for when you are going to watch your lectures or what have you. So, last thing. I am going to send you your lectures way in advance of the actual date okay, that, that is suggested on the course outline. I will probably send you the lectures every Friday or Saturday prior to the actual lecture date. That'll give you lots of time, maybe over the over the weekend, to watch the lecture, make notes and all that, so that you're done for the week. Okay? So that'll be my promise to you. I'll always make sure you have the lectures way in advance, right? So that you have time to figure things out. And other than that, I think that that's more or less it for the course, right? Um, you might have questions, but as I said, those questions will be answered. Most of them will be answered, right, as we move through. Okay, and so I think that's good for now, and uh, I hope you enjoy the course. Stick with it. As I said, if you follow my writing instructions, they're a bit different from, well, they're quite different from what you've been shown before, but if you follow, you will improve. All right, so anyway, have a great rest of your day, and I'll be talking to you again in a week. All right, thanks. Bye.